connecting to this uh, fourth uh, session in a range of sessions about how to publish in Emerald uh, journals. Thank you so much for joining us today. This session is uh, recorded as well, so you can view the session uh, uh, whenever you want. We'll post the links to this session on our YouTube uh, playlist. This will be shared with you as well, and we'll share the link to the playlist on um, on our social media as well here at Emerald. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my name is Guido Smalcha. I'm the uh, commercial manager for the uh, Caribbean region. Um, and most importantly, we've got on the call Andre Yun. He's our editorial manager for Latin America and the Caribbean. Very experienced uh, in the editorial space um, here in Latin America and beyond. And uh, he will be conducting today's session on how to publish your book or teaching case. So we're very honored and proud to have him with us today. Um, so for those who um, are relatively new to Emerald Publishing, uh, we've been around for a little more than 50 years. Uh, we publish mainly in the areas of business management and economics, but we've also have very um, good and strong collections in the area of uh, health sciences and in um, uh, engineering, and computing technologies as well. So in education as well. So we're growing on those areas. So hopefully um, after watching the session, you might become motivated to join our family of authors. Um, and uh, publish one of your papers, be it in a book or even in a teaching case, or why not in a journal with us. So without further ado, um, you can, this session is interactive uh, in the sense that uh, you can always text us your um, questions, your suggestions, your comments through the uh, public chat that we have. And uh, of course, during the course of the presentation, we're more than uh, honored to be able to um, interact with you and, and share with you the knowledge and also open the floor for you to share your knowledge uh, in the whole process of publishing with us as well. So without further ado, I'll hand over the floor to you, Andre. Thank you very much, Guido, uh, for your kind words. It's a pleasure to to be with you, Totila, our dear colleagues. Also, welcome everyone. I can see some familiar faces, Alfred, Danny, Juridia, I think. Um, thank you for being with us and other colleagues on the chat. Um, today we are going to talk not about journals, but about books and teaching cases. And I hope the, the pieces of information in, in these slides today will be very helpful. As you know, uh, the presentation is not meant to be too long. We will be sharing some principles, some tips, and I hope uh, you track the slides in the presentation and then we will see much more much more uh, in our website in our cases themselves in our books themselves all right so um in this slide two uh i'll leave this um link to our emma website where you can check more about emerald's history as Guido was saying we were founded in 1967 uh, um, i'll leave this and we are going to focus um, in the books and the teaching cases. Okay, so everyone is ready. Let's start. Um, as I was saying, we are going to talk about books. I'll make a quick comparison of books and articles. Then we'll take a look on how to publish a book. What are the differences compared to articles? And then we'll check the teaching cases and I'll leave the, the link to the cases hub for you all. Okay. Okay, um, let me first talk about the end here. Um, in in the, the countries I visit in, La in Latin America and the Caribbean, people tend to compare books and journals, uh, make them opposed to each other. But I wanted to, to change that a little bit and, and say that books complement journals and vice versa. So if we look here on the left hand side where it says books, we could say that books tend to cover broad topics, basically because uh, books have more space, we can publish more words, more chapters there. Uh, and when we talk about journals, uh, they tend to be very specific. I mean, the articles, uh, we can't cover too much in, 
in the journal article. Why? Because there's a limit in terms of uh, words, space, uh, journals in general, they will have a limit of 8,000 words, 10,000 words, 12,000 words in comparison to books that, well, we will publish many more words than those um, thousands of words, right? Also, um, when we talk about books, uh, we always think of reference books, titles um, like um, the ones we use at the university that become references in our research areas. Uh, just for it, just to give us an example, if we think of marketing, for for instance, we will always talk about Philip Kotler as an example, right? But when we talk about journals and articles, we will be thinking more about recent results. And that's one of the reasons why uh, journal articles tend to be much shorter. We can't cover too much, right? If we think of that uh, Watson and Crick's uh, article about the, the DNA, it was really, really small, right? Compared to a book, right? So I, I wanted to, to highlight this and say that books are not opposed to journals, but they have their own space in the in the publishing uh, space, right? So thinking about books, why should we publish a book? Well, maybe because we need more space, we have a deep research and we want to publish more content. We, we can publish more words here. Also, if you want to publish a book with Emerald, it tends to be very fast, right? Um, this is just an average. It, it could be even faster. Obviously, it could be slower, depend on the, the size of the book. But it's pretty, pretty fast to publish a book uh, with Emerald. And I know that in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, many, many um, education, uh, national education uh, bodies will value the book nearly as important as a journal article, right? Uh, also, one of the reasons to publish a book is the prestige it brings us. As I was citing Philip Kotler, there are um, many other um, examples I could give you all about Brazil of uh, authors that became really famous because they wrote a book that became a textbook and a, refer a national reference for, for the whole country, right? Uh, also, it's a way to reach new audiences in comparison to journal articles that tend to be much more focused in a niche area, right? And our books are also very good. They have high quality and most of them are indexed on Scopus, Athlete, etc. Some of our books are also um, indexed in, in the Web of Science. For those that do not know it, um, besides the journal citation report, there's also a books citation index, and some of our books are also indexed there. Moving on to slide seven, I wanted to give you a few examples of what kind of books Emerald publishes. If you click on the link at the top of the PDF, you'll be uh, sent to our Emerald webpage, and then we will be able to see much more. Okay, but here I wanted to bring you three examples. So the first one are the series, a wide range of well-established titles for scholars. So if you look here on the right-hand side in red, you can read structural approaches to address issues in patient safety. So you might ask, Andre, but I thought Emerald was a publisher really focused in the social sciences? Um, yes, we are. But here you will find um, management in the health area. Okay, so if you click here um, on this link and check our website, you see that we have many um, journals and books as well that will cover other subject areas from a management perspective, which is very interesting. Okay, so this one also talks about hospitals and how to manage um, health in general, okay? Uh, there are also the textbooks that I mentioned before. 
uh, at both uh, undergraduate or postgraduate levels and they are available in on expression if you want to track them to use for a course for example so the one here on the right hand side is the emerald handbook of entrepreneurship on tourism travel and hospitality which is something really interesting for this moment we are living now right of COVID-19 so uh, what's the tourism area going to to be in the next two three four months right and by the way if you want to publish something on on this topic let's say tourism and COVID-19 maybe you could publish something here in Emerald Points which is a short short form book series that allows for a fast response to contemporary issues okay Emerald will have those kind of books short versions that you could publish uh, if you want to touch a let's say brand new topic uh, a new research area so if you take a look on the right hand side you can read here uh, the hero's leadership imperative and this uh, was published this year uh, by the way uh, the three books here were published this this year okay so if you want to know more about them just click here on, on this link at the top of the page and you'll be sent to our emerald web page i also wanted to bring you some uh, other standalone titles there is also an, a series here starting from the right hand side uh, the title here says getting the most out of your doctorate so let's say we are phd students or we are professors but we we want to share uh, how is the uh, PhD life with our students? Uh, I would recommend this book, very interesting. If we move on uh, to the left, we have here two books about gender. The first one says Gender Equality and Empowerment of Women and Girls. And the second one, one is about Women versus Feminism. Very interesting ones. The fourth book, is about autonomous driving. And um, it's also one book which is called a um, professional title. This was um, written by some scholars, but also from executives from the automobile industry. Okay, we will publish those kind of titles as well. And the last one is called Achieving Academic Promotion. Very interesting, I, I read this book. Uh, it talks uh, about the um, the professor life, let's say, in academia, right? And what we need to do to achieve academic promotion. Very interesting as well. If you click on the titles here, on the cover uh, of the, those books, you'll be sent straight to, to their pages, okay? On, on Emerald website. Moving on to uh, slide nine. I wanted to, to share with you the, the book series webpage. So if you click here, you'll be sent to our site as well. And then you can uh, search the, the book series by title or by subject, okay? There are thousands of books here. And I, I really recommend you to take a look. Uh, recently, um, a, a professor from Brazil wanted to start a series about Brazil and they submitted a proposal to Tuamro and we are analyzing it. Okay, so if you want to do the same, you are very welcome. So how, how do we do that? How do we publish? And, and apologies for, for the, um, the Spanish here, says how to publish a book with Emerald. So um, you just need really to send us a book proposal form. Uh, on this slide, I leave the, uh, the link. So just click here on book proposal form and you can download it. And as I was saying before, if you want to publish a book series, you can also download the same form here and then you can send us your proposal, which will be uh, checked by our books experts, okay? This is how the the publication of books works in Emerald. 
it should be very similar to other publishing houses as well but this is how it works for us if you click here you will see this this image much bigger in your in your desktop uh, but what is relevant here as i was saying you need to submit your proposal and it's going to be peer-reviewed just like our journals uh, our books are also reviewed then the author gets the the comments and if both sides agree there's a contract and then the author or the authors can write the book and then submit this to to Emerald, which will produce it and then publish it all right okay okay um i just finished uh the book section so I wanted to, to track if anyone has any questions about publishing books. I can see that some people joined us. Before I start talking about the, the teaching cases. OK, so I don't think there's any questions so far. So um, I'll be talking about the teaching cases now. So. Um, um, Many, many scholars say that delivering case and using the, uh, the case method is the art of managing uncertainty. Why? Because the, the case method is very much center focused in the student instead of the professor or um, the theory, let's say. And because it's focused in the discussion of the case, you never know what's going to happen. So that's why it's the art of managing uncertainty. And the professor is much more of a, of a guide of where he or she wants the discussion to go to. So let's take a look on some comments about this. If you want to know more about the case method, I would recommend you to check this uh, text, Exploration of the Efficacy of the Case Method of Teaching. This was published by uh, Marlene Reed, Rochelle Reed Burson in the Case Journal, which is a journal that Emerald publishes. And by the way, uh, the Case Journal or TCJ was considered the second best journal by this ranking. OK, this information was published in 2016. Uh, our editor for the Case Journal is Rebecca. She's here. And if you want to talk to her, I would recommend you to send her a message here. Rebecca is a very nice person, very open, and I'm sure she'll uh, answer your your email and your questions. Um, one more comment here: the case journal is very much focused in the uh, United States market. Okay, I am uh, highlighting this because Emerald also has another journal, the. Uh, emerging markets case studies which is focused in emerging economies some of the countries that publish uh, a lot with us are india latin america in general china and other uh, emerging economies i wanted to to bring this to us because i, I know many people tend to confuse the the case study in the teaching case context and this case study used as a research methodology in, uh, in journal articles so on the left hand side i'll be actually using the word teaching case instead of case study i know this is very confusing especially for us here in brazil we use uh, estudo de caso or case study for both cases but for, for us here, I'll be saying teaching case on the left hand side, and I'll be using just case for, for the research context on the right hand side. So if we're looking on the teaching case side, the main objective is to teach something and for the students to learn something from, from the teaching case. But the case study is used to support a research argument normally. So um, if we are thinking about a journal article, the authors want to change the theory, bring something new, 
And the case study will be used as literally a case study to, to support the arguments, right? So the results or conclusions should bring implications to the theory or practice, right? But the pitching case should present a nice story, very interesting one for the students. And this should help them to start discussions, think about the, the teaching case. Um, and the, the teaching cases are very much focused in the competency development, right? So we want them to acquire new skills, to think about solutions, possibilities, alternatives for the case. And on the other hand, the case here, this, the case study is very much focused in the theory, let's say, okay? I hope this will become more clear in the next slides. Um, so what makes a good teaching case? Number one, it should be a complete teaching case and it should include teaching notes. If you check Emerald's teaching cases, the all of them will have teaching notes. I will be talking more about the teaching notes in the next slides, but the teaching notes are let's say a resource for the instructor for the professor so they are able to deliver the case and that makes uh, a big difference in comparison to to a a good case but that does not uh, does not have this resource okay um number two here it should be relevant for the unit course or the mba program the teaching cases should always be linked to the theory, to the um, to what the unit course is meant to to teach, right? Uh, number three it should bring enough data for discussion, but not to solve the case. Um, more information should be put in the teaching notes. We are going to see this, and and hopefully this will become clear. It should be very well structured, uh, structured in sections, and of course, it should be well written. Slide 17. Uh, we are going to take a look at this case. It's called Hacienda Flandes, which is a farm, coffee farm based in Colombia. So this case is about a coffee farm. And as I was saying, the teaching cases should tell us subject area, applicability, and the learning outcome. So for this case, this should be applied in the strategic planning for family businesses. In terms of study level, it's meant for MBA family business courses or executive education courses. Okay. And in terms of learning outcomes, uh, I have highlighted here in yellow the concept of a family business as a dynamic system, and here as well, uh, formulate strategies that balance business and family demands, which is something uh, really, really common for, for the companies in Latin America and the Caribbean. Moving on to slide 18, we have here, uh, the first paragraph of the teaching case. And as I said before, the, the teaching cases should always be very well structured. What is the recommendation for the teaching case? In the, in the first paragraph, we should always see the context, which is Hacienda Flandes here, the, where it happened, the date, which is November 20, 10 and then what we call the protagonist who is carlos uh, another comment here that i hear a lot uh, from uh, schools here in, in our region in, in many cases the students won't read the case so if that happens uh, in your class what you could do is you could just read the first paragraph and then the last paragraph and by reading those two paragraphs, you should have kind of the, the pieces of information um, enough to ask students questions and then deliver the case. Okay, um, so moving on to slide 19 here. 
we are going to see uh, what you could add to your teaching case. Some tables, images, uh, graphics. And here we are going to see the dilemma. So uh, we are about to finish reading the case here. And then it says that Carlos Jr. sat in the living room at Hacienda Flandes, the coffee farm, with a cup of black coffee, looking out the window at the coffee plantations and the new rows of banana and planting crops. And um, he felt that he was moving in the right direction, but some doubts remained. Will the coffee business be profitable? Uh, was his brother going to return? How he handled the situation? So um, this is the, the dilemma. They are here with those questions. And as I said, by reading the first paragraph and the last paragraph, we should, we should have, a, have a good idea of what the case is about. And then this would be helpful for us if no one uh, read the case, right? So in, in a few minutes, this is how the teaching case should look like, okay, in terms of structure, uh, who should be present, as I was saying, we should always have the protagonist, the date, where the case happened. Uh, was it a company? In this case, it was a coffee farm. And then the dilemma at the end. Now I'm going to talk about the, the teaching notes, which is something really, really important when we talk about teaching cases. What are the teaching notes? They are a document that can be shared with the professor, the instructor, and this should not be shared with the students because they have most of the answers and questions and other pieces of information that we are going to see now. So um, in the teaching note, we are going to see the learning goals. Uh, so this one says, at the end of the class, the MBA students should be able to, and then they are the, uh, the learning outcomes. It also has the topics for the case, in this case, family business systems and so on, and other potential topics related to ones like leadership and succession, family business management, strategic analysis in general. And for this one, we can see a suggested rating, which is uh, chapter one of Carlock and Ward. And as we can see here, the chapter is about the importance of planning for business families, which has all to do with the teaching case itself. Okay. Moving on to the next slide. So here we can see the times for each, each section that are suggested by the authors of this case. So they have suggested some assignment questions, which are not listed here because we don't have space here in this presentation, but I, uh, I manage, it, manage it to share with us the structure of this teaching note and what the author suggests in terms of time for each section. So introduction, 20 minutes, opportunities for uh, threats to this family business, 15 minutes, and so on family business as a dynamic system, et cetera, until we reach here conclusions and epilogue, five minutes for each one. Obviously, uh, the, the structure does not need to, to follow this as it is here, but it's a good start. I know that many professors adapt those teaching notes uh, to their own uh, teaching style, let's say. Okay, slide 24. We are not going to read everything here because I know it's a lot of text, but I want us to focus on this. So in the teaching note, in the strategies to balance business and family demand section, which should have 45 minutes, authors suggest that the instructor could ask what alternatives this business should consider. And there is actually a non-exhaustive list presented on Carlock and Ward, which is that book mentioned before, okay? And this non-exhaustive -exhaust list is listed here. 
Okay, so the teaching notes are really a very, very nice resource for the instructors to use while delivering the case. And in this last slide, I, I left here the, the link to our Emerald Cases Hub. If you want to know more about how to publish cases, how to use teaching cases in class, you just need to create your profile here, sign in, and then you should be able to see what uh, Emerald has here, okay? Uh, that should be all. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this presentation today was meant to be really uh, short, and um, I want to leave now uh, you very free to, to ask these questions, and I wanted to pass the presentation to my colleague Guido, who can share more about the cases and books uh, now in our presentation today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andre. Uh, that was a very interesting uh, session. Thanks so much for giving an insight in, in, in the books uh, publishing and the, and, and the cases publishing. Um, and uh, I'm just going to um, open up the floor just a couple of uh, seconds. So uh, just in case you have any questions, feel free um, to post them in the chat box. Um, Andre just mentioned as well the case hub. So I just uh, shared with you a link in the public chat box. Okay. But there's no questions at this point. Um, what I'll just do in the next couple of minutes, I'll just quickly show you the Emerald Insights platform. I'll show you how to access the content, uh, how to view the books and the e-cases that we host. And then after that, of course, uh, if there's any other questions about uh, how to use the platform itself and, and any other questions for Andre, then by all means. Oh, we've got a question here, Andre, uh, from, from Danny, Nathaniel. Um, he says, some publishers tend to ask authors about the market for a proposed book. Does Emerald do the same? Uh, thank you, Guido. Uh, hi, Danny. Thanks for your question. Yes, um, Emerald will do the same. You, if you download the book form, you see that question just over there. Um, it's interesting because Emerald would like to know if there is uh, any potential market for your your book. So that's why the question is there. Thank you. Perfect. Well, if there's only questions for now, I'll just go ahead and uh, briefly show you what Emerald Insight uh, does and, and how it uh, quickly works. So I guess that most of you um, obviously are accessing from home in these turbulent times. Oh, uh, Danny just posted another question for you, Andre. Uh, also, do you have any tips for how authors might go about finding about the market for proposed books? Uh, thanks, Guido. Uh, thanks, Danny, for, for the, the second question. Um, if I were you and if I were to publish a book, um, I would probably cite other authors, one, two, ten, maybe more. I would share about those books with the publisher. So let's say I'm going to talk about um, management in Brazil, right? Uh, I would try to see if there are other books that also talk about management in Brazil. And then I would share that with the publisher, who the authors are, uh, who uh, the other publishers are, those pieces of information are really good. Um, and that will help the publisher to understand which uh, publishers are publishing in the, uh, in the same field. So that's why it's really interesting. Thank you. All right, thank you, <clears throat> Andre, once again. 
So up on the screen right now, you've got the uh, landing page of Emerald Insight, which is a platform where all the content that we, that we publish as Emerald is hosted. Um, so with Emerald, we publish journals. We publish, of course, the uh, e-books, uh, business cases, um, and also expert briefings, which are a news analysis of geopolitical and macroeconomic events. That's the latest edition of, uh, within our product portfolio. And then, of course, we also have an open access um, uh, portal that I will touch on uh, in a couple of minutes as well. So here in the landing page, what you can do is obviously you can start to search for the content subscribed by, uh, by your institution. Um, if you're lucky, your institution subscribes all the content that we provide. And um, if not, I'll just show you how you can select content only subscribed by your institution. So um, up on the page, if you're connected then remotely, um, we recommend you to go to your library website, of course, um, search for Emerald. And if you click on that link, then you will see a welcome message at the top left of your screen. And with that, you're good to go to search and view the online uh, articles and book chapters and cases and so forth. But if you want a little more of a personalized reading experience, we, um, we definitely recommend you to create a personal account. That's fairly simple. The register button at the top right. Just put your, uh, your name, the email address, and that's how an account is pretty much created. Then you go to the login button. I'm doing it right now. Put your email address and your password. And then you're fully logged in as a personal uh, user as well with an Emerald. Okay, so at the top, then you'd have these additional uh, items. You've got the safe searches, you've got your profile, uh, you've got a link to my products. So that actually gives a listing of all the uh, collections and the journals and, and the books that your institution subscribes for you. And then you've got a button to export our content, which will take you to the entire content that we have as Emerald. Great, so this is the search engine. So uh, you can add here any keyword, a combination of keywords and also an entire phrase. So I'm just gonna look for um, the phrase sustainable business model. And as you can see, as I go typing along, um, the actual search box suggests uh, titles which actually contain those, those keywords. So they could be an ebook chapter, an uh, ebook title, could be uh, a journal title and so forth. Right, so we click here on the search icon, and there you go. So it, um, it returned 44,000 results, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, at the um, left-hand side, you've got the uh, content available, so this means that you have full access to the, to the full text of this particular item, as we call it. So this is an article, so this is a journal article in this case. And if you scroll down, um, you can view all those results. Uh, you've got the publication date of the particular um, piece. In this case, it's an article. So this is the link to the actual article itself. You've got the authors up here. You've got a quick introduction to the, um, to the summary of the article. And a little to the right, you've got two quick links to the HTML version, which is the online version of the article, and a link to the PDF. And if you open up um, the height summary section, you've got the full abstract of this particular article. And on the right-hand side, you've got the more details, including the publication where this article is published in. And then also you've got keywords relating to this article to further help you down and refine your search. Okay. Um, on the top, you also have the sorted by relevance option. So you can even sort the search results by, uh, by, by relevance, uh, newest to oldest and oldest and newest. And on the right-hand side, and this is uh, really important, you've got three uh, refining parameters. You've got your access, your year, which is your date range, and your content type. So about the access, I remember I said initially that if you're lucky, your institution will subscribe the entire uh, Emerald portfolio for you. So all the ebooks, the journals, and so forth. If you're unsure, I, um, I would always recommend you to click on the only content I have access to. So in that case, all the search results will actually be search results that you will have access to the full text to. Okay. If for some reason you're only interested in open um, open access content, then you can click on that link uh, on that uh, section there as well. Again, as I said, you can further refine results by uh, time frame, so either last week, uh, last month, and so forth, and also here on content type. Now, since we were talking this session is about uh, book parts and uh, and case studies, you can further 
refine your uh, search here. Uh, below the book part, it says early site articles. And early site articles are those articles which, they're from journals, of course, in this case. And those are articles which have uh, been uh, accepted for uh, publishing. So they've passed the famous peer review process, uh, but haven't actually been published. So what we at Emerald, Emerald strive is to get uh, your paper and your research out there as soon as possible. So that's what we call early site articles. Um, if we just go ahead and click on, we can further refine. Actually, let's just go and look for some book part. So this will actually narrow my search down to 5,000 results. And it only uh, shows me book parts. So only pieces uh, within, within books. And if you click on any given um, link, it will open up the, uh, the book itself. So the chapter within the, uh, on the piece in the book itself. And on the top, you've got again below the name of the uh, the chat, the article. You've got the uh, author. You've got the link to the uh, to the book itself, the publication date, and um, you've got here the link as well to the um, to the PDF of this particular document. On the left hand side, you've got a quick index and an abstract, so you can easily navigate throughout the uh, throughout the entire uh, book piece as well. Okay. Um, so that's essentially how you perform a, a basic search. If you want to perform an advanced search, um, there's two options to get there. You can either click on the advanced search option here at the top, right next to the search button, or you can always, at any given time, click on the logo on the top left, which will take me back to the initial page, the initial start page, and then again, click on the advanced search option right there. So um, for the advanced searches, right from the start, you can make your selection and, and only search within particular um, Format. So, if you're only interested in the book part or in the case study, you can add your keyword searches right here in this these boxes. Uh, so this can be a combination again of keyword searches. You can also filter those keyword searches within certain fields, within titles, only within the abstract, and so forth. So just let me go ahead and do a quick search on tourism, uh, pandemic, and global. It shows me 174 search results with those uh, parameters. Um, again, you've got your link to the article right here. On the right-hand side, you've got your further options to refine. Um, and say you're only interested in looking at the case studies. On the right-hand side, you've got the content type refining option. And these are the results that it provides with the parameters of tourism and pandemic and global only in the case studies that we offer. So you click on the uh, title there, and this will take me to the full uh, case uh, itself. Again, on the left-hand side, a nice abstract to navigate through the case. And here you can read about the entire case. Um, we have always got, and what uh, Andre as well pointed out, is the teaching notes. So these teaching notes are very handy, of course, for the professor to be able to use those teaching notes in the class. So, they're like guides uh, on how to use them, uh, how to engage the students in the, in, the, um, in the classroom discussion regarding the particular case. So you can find that all information there. And let me just return to the uh, home page. So that was the advanced search and the basic search. Um, at the top, you've got a button which has explore our content. And from here, you can navigate directly to the different uh, uh, content types that we offer. So clicking on the journals links will show you an entire list of all the journals, uh, books. You click on that one for a second. So this will show you a list of all the 2,500 books that we uh, currently publish. Right, here they are. So if you click on any of these links, it will take you to the more detailed information about the particular book. And at any given time, you can go back to the Explore Our Content button at the top. We can do the same for case studies. Like as Andre mentioned, um, we publish uh, many cases. Uh, we've got a package which is called eCase Collection. Uh, it includes uh, cases uh, from all around the world, and, and we, we package that in a, in a package called Emerging, Emerging Markets Case Studies. Uh, that's a lot used in um, case studies from, from developing economies. Uh, it's actually a very popular package that we have. Uh, besides that, we have the case journal itself, which is a journal which is exclusively dedicated to the journals. And we also have uh, business cases, 
that we host on behalf of uh, universities, prestigious universities around the world, uh, like Kellogg's, uh, University of Virginia. Uh, we've got the uh, IIM University in India and Fudan University in China as well. So we host those cases on the platform as well. Um, if you're interested to know a little more about the cases itself, and maybe we want to search within this particular uh, category, so in this case, emerging market case studies, just click on this link, and this will automatically take me into the um, search engine to easily search and directly search with all the, uh, the emerging case studies. Okay, um, so that was essentially just a very brief overview of how you can search within, uh, within Emerald. Um, again, we also have author tools, so um, tools for you as an author. If you scroll down to the bottom of the uh, landing page, we've got a couple of services right here, and we've got a link uh, to uh, various types of users. So if you're an author, we've got a link right there. If you're just a researcher there, so just let's click on the author link, and this will uh, show me all the services that provide you as an author. Um, so ranging from how to publish with uh, the, uh, Emerald, um, how to find this, uh, a journal. We can uh, also now show you all the journals that we have in a certain subject area. Uh, we have all the calls for papers available, etc. So let me just click on the publish with us. And this will provide you an introduction on what is needed for each of the content types. So if I go to the journals, uh, publish in the journals, it will give me a brief overview of the entire process um, from submitting your, your, your journal to the uh, reviewing the uh, peer review process. But I just wanted to touch on the two items that we discussed today, so on the books. So this is a section on how to publish, uh, obviously, in the books. This is the graph that uh, Andre showed in his presentation as well, so which explains the publishing process here at Emerald. And, um, let me click on the get ready to publish. So again, this will show you all the different types of uh, books that we offer at this moment, where you can publish in. And here we've got submit your proposal. You can actually uh, submit if you want to publish with us in a book, this is where you can go and, and submit your proposal. Right. And then the same pertains for the, uh, for the teaching cases. Right, so there you go. So you can go ahead and look at all the uh, information and all the requirements that are there to be able to publish in either of the cases. Uh, so we can go, for example, here to the case journal. Uh, this will take me directly into the, all the information related to the case journal. So uh, the aim and the scope. So if you want to publish here, be very sure to, to read what the actual aim is of this particular publication. Uh, we've got a link to the editorial team, like Andre showed. We've got the editor-in-chief, Rebecca Morris. Uh, there's an email address. You can also reach out to them, to the to members of the editorial team, before actually submitting your paper to see if your paper is actually uh, relevant uh, for their publication. We've got the author guidelines, and this is very important as well. Um, shows you all the um, requirements that are in place for the particular journal. You've got the calls for papers. And then finally, you've also got uh, your index. Um, it's worth mentioning that the Emerald case is also indexed in Scopus, so which is a, uh, a nice addition in terms of the quality right there for you. So that is uh, just essentially what I wanted to share with you uh, today. Um, I will definitely go ahead and share with you the links to the services. Actually, I'll put that in the chat box as well. There you go. So this provides a link to all the author services that uh, that we have available for you. And um, if you have any further questions, um, Andre, is there anything that you want to add at this point? Uh, hi, Guido. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but maybe just comment that uh, there are always some case competitions and. Uh, also, that in the past we had this uh, Spanish cases um, submit call for, for cases. Not sure if this is going to repeat in the near future, but always um, take a look uh, in our web pages. There's also always something new that might be interesting for the authors here with us today. Excellent.
All right, so remember this session is recorded as well. Uh, so we will later on post a link to the playlist in our YouTube channel, in our Emerald YouTube channel, where this will be available. So please go ahead if, um, if you want, you can always share this session, uh, the online recorded version with your colleagues. And um, yeah, myself and, uh, and Andre uh, are here more than ready to help you. And if there is no further questions for now, then we'd like to thank you so much for your time and uh, stay safe wherever you are. And hope to see you soon in another session from Membro. Thank you very much, Guido. Thank you to everyone. Thanks, Danny. Thank you so much and have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.